one in my life and happy Resurrection Sunday to you. This is a special Sunday. Um, we're commemorating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, man, what a blessing it is to be born again. What a blessing it is to have new life, to be a new creature in Christ and enjoy new life. Uh, the Bible talks about the benefits of new life. and We'll look at that today. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in today. And so glad that you're able to do that. We're just thanking God and really uh, expressing our appreciation and our gratitude for the Lord protecting us in these times, keeping us healthy, keeping us strong. Uh, we're able to come together once again as we we're instructed to do in these last days. And these in-person meetings have been a blessing but also uh, we're able to provide uh, service to those of you who, are, who have yet to come back. We encourage you to uh, work on coming back, you know, build up your faith, seek the Lord, and um, follow uh, the lead of the Holy Spirit, amen? You know, because we are commanded in these last days to assemble ourselves together as we see the day approaching. And some things can't take place without us coming together. How many of you know when we come together, even if two or three of us gather together in his name, he's in the midst. But the assembly of the church is more and more uh, significant these days because this is our time. This is our time to bear fruit so God can present us to the world as the solution. And we can see uh, the unsaved tasting of the fruit that we bear. And then the unsaved come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as a result of them tasting and seeing that our Lord is good. Amen. So I encourage you to, to work your way back to the in-person service. Glory to God. Amen. So having said that, let's go ahead and do tithes and offerings for today. We'll begin with the tithe. We know the tithe belongs to God. So we'll honor God with the tithe first, and we'll look at Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, I'll give you a moment or two to turn there, and then we'll get started with this portion of our worship service where we honor God with the tithes and our offerings. Amen. Glory to God. Malachi chapter 3, beginning at verse 10, it says, Bring ye all the tithe, the whole tenth of your income, into the storehouse, the storehouse, in these times we know that's the local church, that there may be food uh, in my house. We know that we're not bringing food. You know, we're no longer, uh, this is no longer a uh, agricultural society. So food would be the equivalent of uh, financial resources. So bring our financial resources into the house of God, and we can prove, it says, prove me now by it. We can prove God by you, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven uh, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And as we know, uh, that phrase, room enough to receive it, or not be room enough to receive it, we know because uh, the windows of heaven blessing is perpetual. It's ongoing. Remember, we serve an eternal God, and his blessings are eternal. They're, uh, they, they're not fleeting, they're everlasting, and they're abundant in supply. Amen? Then he goes on to say this, and this is really significant uh, in the face of COVID-19. He says, I will rebuke the devourer, the, and, and the devourer is described as insects and plagues. We're in the midst of a plague. And he says, for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine drop its fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. How many of you know this plague is not from God? This plague is from Satan. Satan is inspiring uh, people in the land, uh, you know, to do things in cooperation with him. So we know that the plague doesn't come from God. If it came from God, he wouldn't rebuke it. But when we tithe, when we, when we tithe, we connect ourselves with our covenant. Amen. And God says, as a result of the tithe, that he will rebuke the devourer, Satan himself. He will rebuke the devourer for, his, for our sake. He'll tell the devil, 
Stop, no more. He'll also rebuke the plague. He'll tell the plague, stop, no more, when we tie. We're supposed to live our lives in agreement with God. One of the ways that we agree with God is with our words. Amen. So when you tithe today, you tell the devil and you tell COVID-19, stop, no more, just like God is doing. Amen. And you know, when we give voice to our covenant, the angels hearken unto the voice of the word of God and they carry out their charge of protection. Amen. So the tithe doesn't just uh, come with or come with the promise of financial blessings. The tithe is connected to many blessings. Amen. One of those being God rebuking the devourer or plagues for our sakes. Then it goes on to say, and all nations shall call us happy and blessed. For we shall be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. And uh, that is talking specific uh, to us bearing the fruit that God has ordained for us to bear in these last days. The entire world will see the church. Uh, they'll come to the brightness of our rising. Amen. And these are the days in which that is going to come to pass. It's coming to pass. It's happening now as we speak. So we have to, as the body of Christ, walk in the ways of the Lord, follow his ordinances, following his word. And one of the main ways we do that is through the tithe. Amen. Glory to God. Now, let's turn over to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. We've been uh, looking at these promises in chapter 9 for quite some time because we're believing God for all kinds of favor. Amen. And that's an awesome promise that's contained in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. So let's turn there and we'll begin at verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. It says, let each one give as he is made up in his own mind and purpose in his heart. Make sure that your heart is in your giving. We don't want to just be people who just do stuff out of habit. We really want to think about what we're doing. And really, we're, we want to think about uh, the effect the gospel has on other people. We want, to, we want to sow so that blessings come to others. That number one blessing is others being able to hear the word of God with the hope that they'll come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we got to think about uh, the advancement of the gospel when we give, because that's the ultimate goal of our giving. Also, you know, it's, it's obvious that God uh, wants us to be aware of the promises associated with our giving. But the main thing we need to focus on is the why. Why are we giving? We're giving so that blessings may come to others. It says that. Here in this, this, this scripture, it says, Let each one give as he's made up in his own mind and purpose in his own heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things, and is, and is unwilling to abandon or do without. A cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. Say all grace. Now, good. What we've been using in place of all grace is every kind of favor. Amen. God is able to make all grace, every favor, every kind of favor, uh, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be, self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support, and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Amen. So let me do this real quick. When I, when I read that scripture, I'm just reminded of how faithful all of you have been uh, as a partners of this ministry during this time of famine, during this time of, of pandemic. Uh, you all have continued to sow. You've continued to support and obey God. And that's why you really, really, really need to be in expectation for God to show you all kind of favor, whatever favor you need. And then there's favor that you don't need, but God can still show you favor in those areas. We know, we know that we serve a God who's more than enough. He's El Shaddai. He's the all-sufficient one. So, you know, God loves to, to uh, surprise us and do things even that we're not expecting. Uh, God is able to do that, and he's willing to do that because your giving 
has been so faithful. You've been so faithful in your giving. It's been consistent. And again, salute to all of you. Thank you so much. And more than a, a man can thank you, God is so appreciative. And the, the, the word of God tells you exactly how he feels about that and what he does. He won't abandon you. He refuses to, to uh, leave you. He refu refuses to do without those who are committed to their giving. And you all definitely fit in that category. So in addition to your regular offerings, don't forget about partnership and then challenging, Dr. Wilson challenging 50 people 50 of you to do $50 over and above your regular tithes and offerings. That's the favorite challenge, and that's what we're uh, sowing. Um, expecting, expecting God to show you all kinds of favor. So that promise and what we've been confessing is directly related to the favorite challenge. Again, 50 people doing $50 over and above your regular tithes and offerings. Amen. Glory to God. So take time to do that. Take time to prepare your checks or go online, however you're going to send in your tithes and offerings. Give you a moment to do that. And while you're doing that, I'll remind you of the four options that are available to you uh, with regard to you sowing uh, your offerings and returning the tithe and sowing into the favor challenge. Amen? So number one, you can go to ByLifeChristianFellowship.com and so online. Number two, you can mail in your tithes and offerings, your partnership, your favorite challenge uh, to the church. The address is located in the description box at the bottom of your screen. Number three, we're going to be here till uh, 2 o'clock p.m. this afternoon to receive your tithes, your offerings, partnership, and favorite seed in person. You know that's Dr. Wilson's favorite. He loves for you guys to drive by and uh, sow your seeds in person. We'll love to see you as well. Amen. And then if the three or four mentioned options uh, are suitable for you, you can always give us a call here at the church and we'll arrange for your tithes, your offerings, partnership, uh, and or your favorite seed to be picked up at your place of residence. Amen. So those are the four options that we've made available to you. And again, we thank you for your continued support and look for God to show you all kinds of favor. All those who uh, in, are involved in sowing in the favor challenge, look for God to show you all kinds of favor. Amen. Glory to God. All right, so it is Resurrection Sunday and I believe that the Lord has given me a word for you today with regard to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Resurrection Sunday. So grateful. So grateful uh, that God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son and uh, gave, us, gave us the opportunity. And really, you want to be specific. He drew us by his spirit uh, to that saving knowledge. Amen. He drew us by his spirit, so that our hearts would be prepared and ready to receive the gift of God in our Lord Jesus Christ. So ever so grateful to you, Father, we thank you. We give you glory today, and this service is yours. Amen. Yield myself to you, Holy Spirit. Think through my, my mouth. Speak through my mouth. Think through my mind. All of you and none of me. Amen. Let's make our confession of faith and we'll get started for today. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I'm a doer, not just a hearer. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 10. Again, that's 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 10. Amen. 
talking about and commemorating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, it says, And how you look forward to and await the coming of his Son from heaven. Uh, we, in this age, the church age, the age of grace, are awaiting the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven. And how many of you know his coming is soon? Uh, he was very specific in giving us signposts that would indicate the season of his return. And those signposts read like the headlines that you see, you know, when you turn on your computer in the morning, you go to your, your homepage, those headlines, um, uh, you know, you see those headlines um, match the scripture. Amen. You know, specifically Matthew 24, Luke 21, uh, other scriptures that talk about these last day events, we see those in, in today's headline. When you turn on the news, that's what you're seeing. Amen? And it says, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who personally rescues and delivers us, delivers us out and from the wrath, bringing punishment, which is coming upon the impenitent, and draws us to himself, investing us with all the privileges and rewards of the new life in Christ. Everybody say, my new life in Christ. Amen. That's what we're going to talk about today. Because when Jesus, uh, God rose Jesus from the dead, we're talking about the resurrection. Because of the re resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, we as believers have a new life in Christ. We have a new life in in Christ, and there's privileges and rewards connected to that new life. Amen. Turn over to Colossians chapter 3. We're celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're also celebrating our new life in Christ. We've been, you know, Dr. Wilkes has been talking about that for quite some time. We're talking about, we're talking about that today. We're going to continue talking about that because this is what we're living. We're living our new life in Christ. None other than eternal life. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 1. Believe you have it. It says, if then you have been raised with Christ to a new life. Say that. Say, I've been raised with Christ to a new life. Thus sharing his resurrection from the dead. Every believer is sharing the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. It tells us to aim at, seek, the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Let me turn over there. I got that on my notes. Let me turn over there in my Bible because I want to read another scripture out of uh, Colossians chapter 3 that I hadn't planned on reading. But I will read it. Colossians chapter 3. Let's just continue reading. Verse, we, we read verse 1, let's read verse 2. It says, Set your minds and keep them set on what is above uh, the higher things, not on things that are on the earth. Now this is the scripture I wanted to get to. It says, For as far as this world is concerned, you have died, and your new real life is hidden with Christ and God. I love that phrase there. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you and I, who have believed in him, have received a, a new life in Christ. And Colossians 3 and 3 really gets specific and calls it our new real life. Our new real life. The life that we've, we've, that we've received as a result of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is our new real life. Our real life is hid with Christ in God. Amen. I love how it says, your new real life. Our real life is the new life that we receive uh, when we receive Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Uh, turn over to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And we're looking at our new real life in Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to read verses 4 and 5. Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to read verses 4 and 5. 
Amen. It says, but God, so rich he is in his mercy. And remember, this, this is the experience that God wants all of his people to have. It's a must. It's a must have. If you're, if you're new real life, let me say it this way. If you're going to perceive and experience your new real life, this is at the heart of it. You experiencing the mercy of God personally. That's where it begins. You experiencing the mercy of God personally. Why? Because the mercy of God, that, that experience, you experiencing the mercy of God personally affects you. It affects you in a way in which you really need to be affected. Amen. It affects you in a way where you come into uh, a life where you're trusting in God. Experience, personal experience with God uh, produces trust in God or it produces faith. Amen. The Bible says that faith work it, or and I like the way the Amplified says it, it says faith is activated by love. Amen. Faith is activated by you and I experiencing the love that God cherishes for us. Amen. The love that God cherishes for us is a love that's unconditional. Uh, unconditional love is mercy. It, it's, it's mercy because we don't deserve the love of God. Really, we deserve the wrath of God. But God, in his mercy, shows us his loving kindness. He wants, and he wants us to experience his loving kindness personally. He wants us to experience his mercy personally because that's what activates our faith in him. That's what activates or starts of our life of faith. Our life in which we lean on God and absolute trust and confidence in his power, his wisdom, and most importantly, his goodness. Amen. Us experiencing the mercy of God uh, is, the, is our exit out of self-righteousness. Glory to God. Amen. But God, so rich he is in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful, intense love with which he loved us. Isn't that something? God loved us so much that he, had, he was moved into action. What was that action? He, him giving us his only begotten son. Hmm. That's why the foundation, the Bible talks about us being rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. Why? Because the love of God is his reason for initiating a relationship with us. We didn't, we weren't, nobody was seeking after, after God. The book of Romans tells us that no one seeks after God. But it was God and his love seeking after us and then going to the extent of sending his only begotten son to die for our sins. Uh, and all that is a show of God's love. All that is a show of God's mercy. And since he loved us so much, he was moved to action so that he could satisfy the love that he cherishes for us. That, that's, that's awesome. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ Himself, the same new life with which he quickened it. Now, our new life, our new real life, according to Colossians 3 and 3, is the very life of Christ himself. Isn't that awesome? God gave his son. Uh, he died on the cross. Amen. Actually went to hell on our behalf. He he took on and really experienced the penalty of our sins, not his. He was made sin with our sins, and he, he experienced personally the penalty for our sins, and then God raised him up from the dead 
And when we received him, we share in his resurrection. We share in his resurrection in that we receive the very life of Christ himself. Lord, have mercy. All of us were destined to go to hell. But because God loved us so much, he sent Jesus to die on our behalf, raised Jesus from the dead, and raised us up with him. In that, he gave us the very life of Christ himself. Amazing. The same new life with which he quickened him. For it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Amen. That scripture is awesome. Let's go over to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. The same new life with which he quickened it. For it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which I, you, we did not deserve. I had to read that again. That, that is just... I mean, when we uh, are before the Lord, when we get to heaven... Uh, and we, th these things are a reality to us. I mean, when we really see it, when we're really experiencing uh, the glory of God, I mean, we're going to praise God for eternity, willingly. I mean, with, with a grateful heart. Amen. In, when we're, you know, we're in this earth and we're in these bodies, and that serves as a barrier for us. But one day, We'll see things. We'll even see him how he is. And boy, I'll tell you, when we get there and everything is clear, there's no more, there's no more boundary. There's no more um, limitation between us and God. My goodness. Um, the, the, the gratitude that we'll have, it, it, it'll, it'll go for eternity. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verse 5. It says, for if we have become one with him, how? By sharing a death like his, we shall also be one with him in sharing his resurrection by a new life lived for God. My goodness. Again, we're celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're also celebrating our own resurrection because when we, we share in his resurrection, how? We share in the resurrection of Jesus Christ by receiving his very life, which is our new, real life. Glory to God. Now, let me read that one more time. This is an awesome scripture. It says, if, for if we become one with him, say that I'm one with him, say that. I'm one with him by sharing a death like his, we shall also, here it is again, be one with him, sharing his resur resurrection by a new life lived for God. Uh, now, we're supposed to live our life, our new life, for God, but that is impossible without us living from God or us living in dependence on God. I believe that's Colossians um, 3, and, 3 and 19, somewhere around there. But Colossians, Colossians tells us that we need to do everything in the name of the Lord. More specifically, we need to do everything in dependence on the Lord. Amen. So when the Bible tells us to do something, we know, especially at this ministry, you know, Dr. Wilkes makes that uh, very plain. And, very, you know, he puts that before us, keeps that before us, so that we don't make the mistake of going out trying to do what the Bible tells us to do in our own strength. You know, in Philippians, it says that, you know, we're supposed to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. But this very important statement that Paul makes, he says, not in our own strength. Why? For it is God who is working in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Really, we won't even have the desire to do right without the Holy Spirit working that desire, which is his desire in us. Amen. That is a part of the new life. That's one of the benefits and privileges of the new life. When we receive the life, the very life of Christ himself, um, Christ in us begins to work his desires in us. Amen. Glory to God. Now, 
we have become one with him. I want to look at another scripture that confirms, not only confirms that statement, but gives us some, some details about that statement. So turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, looking at our new real life in Christ. We've been raised with him. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. It says, but the person who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Now, that is so amazing that uh, this is a daily meditation. This has become a daily meditation and confession for me. Uh, you know, that's just something I just can't get over. God has really joined our spirits with his spirit. We're, we're one with the Holy Spirit. And, you know, that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, we've been looking at John chapter 15, verse 16, where Jesus said that he's chosen us, he's appointed us, and he's planted us to bear fruit. Well, think about it. When Jesus was raised from the dead, and when we received Christ, we received his very life. We received our new real life. Amen. And when we look at the specifics behind that, what happened was that the spirit of God came in to our spirit, and now he's made us one spirit with him. So whatever the Holy Spirit, whoever the Holy Spirit is, we are. Uh, whatever the Holy Spirit is, has, we have. Amen. Um, we are one. Think about that for a second. You are, you are one spirit with the Lord. When God looks at us, he doesn't see just us. He sees us as one with Christ. There's no difference between us and Christ in the mind of God. And we have the mind of God. We have the mind of Christ. And if we're yielded to the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ is another benefit and privilege of our new real life. Amen. And if we're yielded to the mind of Christ, we'll see that there's no difference between us and the Lord. Amen. And the fruit that we're, or we've been appointed, planted, and chosen to bear, we're one with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We're one with the divine nature. The only thing standing in between us and us bearing that fruit is this, this flesh. This flesh. Amen. But since Jesus has been resurrected, we have been resurrected with him. Amen. Now turn over to Romans chapter 7, verse 6. In light of the statement I just made, uh, let's turn over to Romans chapter 7, verse 6. It says, but now we are discharged from the law and have terminated all intercourse with it, having died to what once restrained and held us captive. So now we serve not under the obedience to the old code of written regulations, but under obedience to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, where? In the newness of life. But now under obedience to the promptings of the Spirit in newness of life. Now, this is how we live. We live based on the promptings of the Holy Spirit as opposed to the promptings of the flesh. Amen. As, a new, as the new creation, those who are living our new real life in Christ, we now live by the promptings of the Holy Spirit as opposed to the promptings of the flesh. What are those promptings? Love, joy, peace, these are the, the, we are now under the influence and the promptings of the divine nature. Glory to God. Patience, long-suffering, 
That's who we really are. If, if we were to look on the inside of us, if we could see, if we could have visual perception of the real us, if we can have visual perception of our real new life, our new real life in Christ, we would see the divine nature, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. We would see those things. That's who we really are. That's who we are on the inside. That's why in these, in these last days we need to embrace our real new life. We, we need to embrace who we are in Christ and put what we are in the flesh to death. Glory to God. That's how we honor. That's how we truly honor the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We honor the resurrection by what? By laying hold of eternal life. By laying hold of our new real life in Christ. Uh, that begins with us laying hold of our true identity in Christ. Amen. Just like the Apostle Paul in Philippians 3, verses 8 and 9, you see a transition that took place in his life where he used to be one who trusted in his flesh. He was so proud of who he was or what he was in the flesh. But when he experienced Christ personally, he was able now to make a comparison. And when he saw Christ, when his eyes were open to who Christ really is, and when his eyes were open to the Christ that lived in him, he came to the conclusion that I no longer want to be found and known for what I am in the flesh. I want to be found and known for who I am in Christ. And the Holy Spirit did that in the Apostle Paul. And they, that same Holy Spirit who manifests that new life in us is bringing us to the same place. What place? A place where we want to be known. We want to be found and known for who we are in Christ. Because when we are found and known, when that desire becomes our desire, when we then and only then will we truly live our new real life, which is in Christ. How can you live your real new life in Christ when you're not identifying with who you are in Christ? If you're identifying with what you are in the flesh, that's going to determine the way your life is going to go. You're going to live your life according to the flesh. That's why God wants you to have a personal experience with him so he can open your eyes and enable you to grasp the reality, the reality of the Christ in you. Amen. He wants to give you the ability to grasp the, the perception, the perception he wants you to give the ability to perceive the reality of the Christ in you. And he wants you, he wants to give you the power to perceive the reality of who you are in Christ so that you can begin living your new real life. Amen. That's why we've been focusing on the inside. That's why God has redirected our focus from out here to in here. Why? Because our new real life is in here. Not out here, but in here. Amen. Glory to God. Turn over to Colossians chapter 3. And we'll look at one more scripture. And that will conclude today's message. I've enjoyed it. I believe the Spirit of God is here with us. Leading and guiding us. Opening our ears and opening our eyes and giving us the ability to grasp the word of God. Amen. These are the last days. This is our time. This is our time to shine. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. And kings shall come to the brightness of our rising. Amen. We got to come out. We got to come out. We can't be afraid. We got to realize that these days, what's going on these days is a direct attack. Uh, on the church. But guess what? The Christ who lives in us, the Christ who has been resurrected from the dead has already overcome this world. Again, that's why we need to lay hold on eternal life. We need to lay hold on the life that's in us. Why? Because that life 
is a life that enables us to walk in the victory that Jesus has already bought and paid for with his own blood. Again, if we're going to honor the resurrection, if we're going to honor the resurrection, we've got to start living our new real life in Christ. We have to lay hold on eternal life. Colossians chapter 3. So based on all, what's the conclusion? What's the conclusion uh, to all that we've, we've said today, all that we've read today? What's the conclusion? Colossians 3 verse 9 tells us what we need to do. Amen. Colossians 3 verses 9 and 10. Do not lie to one another for you have stripped off the old unregenerate self with its evil practices. Again, we talk about us being one spirit with the Lord. If that's true, which it is, then there's only one thing standing in between you and I and us bearing the fruit that God has chosen, uh, appointed, and planted us to bear. That one barrier that needs to be moved out of the way is our flesh, our old, unregenerate self. That needs to be stripped off. When the Apostle Paul uh, in, in, in Philippians 3, 3 1 refers to us as the true circumcision, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about the true circumcision in that we are the believers who have stripped off the old unregenerate self, enabling our new real life to manifest, enabling that to come forth. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 10, and have clothed yourself with the new spiritual self, which is, which is ever in the process of being renewed and remolded into fuller and more perfect knowledge upon knowledge after the image, the likeness of him who created it. Amen. Now, in conclusion, we looked at 1 Thessalonians uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 10, and that talked about us awaiting the Lord's return. Colossians 3 and 10 gets very specific as to what is happening, what should be happening in the life of the believer during us, during the time, in the time in which we're awaiting the Lord's return. So what do we need to do? What are we supposed to be busy with? And have clothed yourself with a new spiritual self. That's what we need to do in these last days. Well, how do I clothe myself with a new spiritual self? It's very simple. You're looking at me in my clothing. If I could see you, I'd be looking at you in your clothing. Amen? So how do I clothe myself with the new spiritual self? I simply look at or see myself for who I am in Christ. Amen? The Holy Spirit will, is empowering us to do that. The Holy Spirit is empowering us by opening the eyes of our understanding so that we can see so that we can perceive the reality of who we are in Christ. When I'm seeing myself in Christ, I now have clothed myself with a new spiritual self. Amen. So when he uses that, that, that phrase, clothe yourself, he's simply saying, see yourself for who you are in Christ. Because that's the real you. And that's the real you that's being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. That's the real you that is going to bear, and it, and it already is bearing, the same image. Amen. As, as we're able to grasp, as we're able to believe, grasp, and walk in the reality of who we are in Christ, that fruit will manifest naturally, just like it manifests on a natural vine. That vine doesn't have to do anything. That branch doesn't have to do anything to stay connected to the vine. 
Amen. Glory to God. Well, I believe that you were blessed today. I know I was. Again, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this Resurrection Sunday. Before we end the service, let me just make this declaration of faith over you. I declare that no evil shall befall you. No plague shall come nigh your dwelling. I also declare that a thousand might fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Why? Because you have made the Lord your refuge and your fortress. And you say of the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, and you I will trust. And when you say that, the angels hearken unto what you've given voice to, and they carry out their charge of protection. I declare the angels of God are camped about, round about you. They'll bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot against the stone. Uh, that, that's it for today. Uh, God bless you. And make sure that you turn, tune in Tuesday morning at uh, 10 o'clock where, you know, our, our founder, Dr. Robert L. Wilkes, will be teaching the word of God. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your Resurrection Sunday. For more information on Vine Life Christian Fellowship, please visit our website at www.vinelifechristianfellowship.com. Options concerning the tithe, offerings, partnership, or favor challenge are located in the description box below. It is our hope that you have been blessed and enlightened by this message. As we begin our online journey, we encourage you to subscribe to this channel, ensuring that you will not miss future messages. On behalf of Vine Life Christian Fellowship, we would like to thank you for joining us. Have a blessed day, and we will see you next time.